I think the easiest way to think of this, to sort of approach this painting is to look at the figures in the pain, painting as being different planets. Uh, so we have uh, the Sun here and Venus, Mars, the Earth. And here is Saturn. This is sort of the moment when the when the Earth was uh, torn out of the orbit of Saturn and, and attracted to the Sun. You now it's sort of represented as a single moment, but it's actually kind of a process. Um, the the uh, the figures, I think, are um, sort of, in a sense, trying to remain a part of Saturn, a part of the Saturn system, but at the same time are being, uh, you know, they're, they're actively sort of trying to run away from the approaching force of the sun, but they're being pulled toward it. Um, let's see, what else can I say about that? Uh, so you have sort of a depiction here of the, in the background, the sort of uh, jungle and the river, um, sort of uh, uh, a perfect time and place. And then, you know, the invasion of that space by a, a new power. Um, and uh, um, the, the figure here is like, uh, you know, Diana or Artemis, who's sort of the, uh, in a sense, like a protector of the, the woods, who's trying to take out the eye that's, uh, that is uh, encroaching on the, on the sort of uh, unspoiled nature. This painting seems to be a, uh, well, there's kind of a, an image here of the, the god and goddess uh, joined together. And I think you could say this is really Venus and Mars together. But there's kind of a, this could be a comet descending or a volcano going off. This figure on the bottom is, uh, is really a, a representation of Dionysus crucified on a boat, which is sinking. Um, the breasts are like grapes. Uh, and the dolphin represents one of the pirates who, who uh, tried to uh, do violence to him and then was turned into a dolphin instead of annihil being annihilated. Uh, the, the pyramid in the back maybe is a representation of Atlantis. The figures above are probably really Mars and Venus uh, conjoined and um, creating havoc on Earth as a result of their uh, interaction with the, with the Earth's, uh, um, how to put it, interaction with the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, so this is sort of, it's, it's sort of a description of, uh, of um, an inner process of uh, refinement. It really, you know, it's sort of like uh, kind of a self-portrait. They're, but it's, they're both the sort of the figure over here and the figure with the beheaded figure are both self-portraits. So it's kind of a description of how does, how do you in the course of your life uh, make yourself into a better person. The heart shape uh, represents uh, an idea that there are sort of three, three vessels that, uh, um, or three uh, channels of, of moving blood that come out of the heart, three main vessels. And uh, I put a king's head on each of the vessels as an idea that they're sort of uh, the three powers at work in, inside the body. That's the lower self, or, you know, uh, the, the, the demonic aspect of, the, of, of oneself. Yeah, again, I should point out that, you know, I, I don't always know exactly what I'm painting, but, you know, I think that is sort of like uh, what it reminds me of is there's a, there's a, a place in, uh, 
in the Ramayana, there's a story about uh, uh, a mountain that has a uh, magical herb on it that's, uh, you know, uh, supposed to save one of the heroes from uh, a wound and a sickness. And um, the, uh, the monkey god goes to find the herb and he can't find it, so he rips the whole mountain up and carries it across India so somebody else can get the herb off of it. So that's what I see here. It's either that mountain or one of the other, like a the mountain at the center of the world uh, that has a kind of uh, spirit that lives inside it. Well, this is uh, uh, sort of inspired by uh, uh, Neolithic goddess figures. Uh, and I imagine this also being uh, maybe uh, a sacred mountain in Malta. I've never been to Malta, but I understand there are these uh, uh, really remarkable uh, stone, uh, ancient stone buildings, and uh, that there was a, uh, a, a, a goddess culture there at one point that produced uh, some of the very beautiful Neolithic art. Uh, and uh, this is an, in a, I think this is a, sort of a, it's sort of a depiction of a female priesthood or, uh, you know, also maybe a retelling somewhat of the uh, uh, story of uh, Demeter and Persephone and Hades. The division here is sort of like chaos and order, or let's say, um, uh, both are sort of aspects of nature, one that's peaceful and one that's uh, violent and tempestuous. Uh, and the, the, the central figure is kind of uh, balancing in between them, sort of uh, uh, accepting both or uh, functioning with equanimity without being uh, drawn to one or the other, but sort of uh, maybe even rotating between the two of them. His one hand up, one, one hand down, uh, and there's maybe the suggestion that he's kind of uh, spinning like, a, uh, like an axis. Uh, actually, a, a recreation of the first painting that I made um, which I ended up destroying because uh, I, I um, made a lot of mistakes, technical mistakes with it. So I've recreated it. Um, and the idea was, uh, well, it initially I saw a sculpture of, uh, a large sculpture of, of a five-headed Ganesh and I thought it was the most fabulous thing I'd ever seen. So I wanted to try and make a painting like that. Uh, Part of the idea is that he's crossing uh, the waters, very stormy waters, which uh, maybe are the, uh, there are a few places, uh, I guess there are probably a lot of them, but I visited a place in Norway that had a gigantic maelstrom uh, passing through it. And it was one of the most uh, strange and impressive natural things I've ever seen. It was uh, so incredibly powerful uh, and, uh, also uh, affecting, uh, just looking at it was like, uh, affected my mind. It was, uh, so anyway, the, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, there's something about crossing uh, stormy waters and the waters are uh, kind of a, a dwelling place of these figures. But this figure is in a sense also like the lower self who's perfected through uh, by the God it comes out reborn from above, uh, from the crown of the God uh, there are witnesses on the side who are sort of his his uh, company and then two sort of uh, water spirits who are um, very devoted to him this this figure initially just started out as a sketch and then uh, slowly turned into uh, a, a deity, you know, a, a goddess, and 
I couldn't, I kept thinking of images of uh, Tara, uh, a Buddhist deity, and so ended up naming, naming the painting after her. Um, she's, I think, sort of a, uh, you know, a, a representation of uh, a mother goddess and earth in some, in some way. This painting was, uh, uh, I think, very, very much uh, inspired by a visit to uh, a museum that had a collection of art from the Northwest Coast. Uh, and uh, there's obviously a strong Egyptian and uh, Persian and Chinese elements in it also. Um, I've come to think of it as a representation of the, uh, of a sort of uh, um, maybe an Atlantean or uh, a, 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 a teacher that came at the beginning of time to help people uh, become civilized, to teach them medicine and art and architecture and uh, law and so forth. Um, the sort of being that's uh, recorded in myths as uh, you know um, the first uh, the first teacher.